let's just start with the uncomfortable fact that the American space program would not be what it is today if it weren't for the contributions of a scientist who was a former Nazi. Werner von Braun was an SS officer during World War II and led a team of German scientists in developing the world's first long-range ballistic missile, a military program aided in large part by slave labor at concentration camps. And yet, less than two decades later, von Braun was leading a team of NASA scientists in the design and development of the Saturn V rocket, the vehicle that ultimately propelled more than a dozen Apollo astronauts to the moon. Historians still debate whether he was an apolitical scientist who had no choice but to work for Hitler or a cunning opportunist who knowingly made a deal with the devil to pursue his research. But what we do know is that he was a rocket science prodigy. Upon earning his PhD in physics in 1934 at the age of 22, he joined the German army as a civilian employee. Though younger than most of his colleagues, von Braun led the team that began developing a long-range ballistic missile. Borrowing heavily from the work of an American rocket scientist, Robert Goddard, von Braun's team built a rocket called the A-4, later renamed the V-2, or V-2. Vengeance weapon. The V-2 was essentially a larger version of the liquid-fueled rockets built by Goddard, though von Braun made changes to the engines that dramatically increased their power. First, he used alcohol instead of gasoline as the main propellant, along with liquid oxygen. But the real power of his design came from two turbo pumps, turbines that moved huge volumes of fuel into the combustion chamber at high speeds. These turbo pumps could force 58 kilograms of alcohol and 72 kilograms of liquid oxygen into the combustion chamber every second, giving it a thrust of more than 25,000 kilograms, far more than Goddard had achieved. Using this technology, on October 3rd, 1942, von Braun's creation became the first man-made object to reach the threshold of space, flying to an altitude of 80 kilometers. The missile could travel more than 5,600 kilometers per hour and carry a 1,000 kilogram warhead. As military weapons go, the V-2 was terrifying, but not always accurate. While the Germans launched 5,000 of the missiles toward Western Europe, only about 1,100 actually reached their targets. Still, the V-2 was believed to have killed nearly 3,000 people. Now, there's at least some evidence to suggest that von Braun's sympathy for the Nazi cause only went so deep. For one thing, he was jailed briefly in 1944 after some Nazi spies infiltrated his program and began to suspect that he wasn't loyal enough. But more importantly for science, when the end of the war was in sight, von Braun was ordered to destroy all work related to the V-2. But instead, he hid his documents in an abandoned mine and recovered them shortly before he and his team surrendered to the U.S. Army. As part of a carefully orchestrated mission known as Operation Paperclip, von Braun and his team were sent to the U.S., where he demonstrated his weapon to the U.S. Army in New Mexico. Later, he was transferred to Huntsville, Alabama, and eventually became director of NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center. It was here that von Braun led the team that developed the Saturn V rocket, the most famous of all the rockets. While his V-2 rocket was a pretty nifty piece of machinery, the Saturn V was truly revolutionary. 102 meters tall and at liftoff weighed more than a dozen 747s. And as the world witnessed during the Apollo missions, the Saturn V was not only incredibly powerful, it divided the work of spaceflight into an elegant three-stage system. The first of its three expendable stages produced 3.4 million kilograms of thrust, making it 130 times more powerful than the V-2. It had five separate F-1 engines designed by von Braun's team so that the outer four engines could move in order to control the direction of the rocket while the center engine just provided more thrust. After after lifting the whole thing to about 68 kilometers, the first stage would separate and the second stage would fire, carrying the spacecraft to the edge of orbit. Once there, the second stage would detach and a third stage pushed the craft into orbit and then toward the moon. Nearly half a century after they were first used, the five first stage engines that were designed by von Braun's team are still the most powerful single chamber liquid fueled rockets ever made. As for von Braun, he went on to rise through the ranks of NASA and worked for aerospace companies, eventually being awarded the National Medal of Science not long before his death in 1977. But he never truly escaped his past. Whether you consider him a villain or a visionary or both, there's still no disputing his legacy. Von Braun turned the dreams of early 20th century rocket scientists into reality, and he did it in less than three decades. Thanks for watching this episode of SciShow Space. If you'd like to learn how you can help us keep exploring the universe, you can go to subbable.com slash scishow, and don't forget to go to youtube.com slash scishowspace and subscribe.